This episode of Taproom Travelers is brought to you by Pep's Draft House Pizza. I'm Paul Graham with Central Waters Brewing Company. I'm the president. Welcome to Central Waters. I'm uh, happy to have you here and show you around our place today. So uh, we're a little bit of an unusual brewery with the amount of flagship beers that we carry. We do have six year-round flagships uh, and in central Wisconsin, we actually have seven year-round flagships. Most unusual is that Mud Puppy Porter from 1998 till now has always been our number one seller. So there's not a whole lot of breweries in the world that have a dark beer as their number one product, but that beer has been what we've been known for as far as our flagships go uh, throughout time. Honey Blonde, definitely number two, a great, nice, easy session beer, um, easy drinking, kind of the crowd pleaser that we like to put out there. For me though, it's more about the seasonal stuff, you know, and honestly, the stuff coming off our pilot system now is where all of my favorites are coming from. And that's kind of because when you do this for 20 years, you've had enough Mud Puppy, you've had enough Honey Blonde. Um, nowadays, the creation and the experimentation that our head brewer is doing on the pilot system is incredible. And then of course, we've got the Barrel Aging Program, which is kind of our gigantic playground. My name's Everett Beck. I'm the lab manager here at Central Waters. Each of these barrels is its own little micro world, and you have to kind of respect that. And there's 3,500 to 4,000 of them out here, so we have a universe of barrels out here that uh, we need to kind of keep track of, make sure that they're aging the way we want them to, and that microbes that we don't want in our beers, like basically things that make sours, like uh, wild yeast strains, lacto, PDO, Brett especially, is not getting into our beers. So it's very important to make sure that we're keeping track of these barrels, making sure that we're not basically making an unintentional sour program out here. You know, we have what we call a couple of flagship barrel-aged beers. You know, the Bourbon Barrel Stout, Peruvian Morning, Cassian Sunset, Bourbon Barrel Scotch Ale, and Bourbon Barrel Barley Wine. But then we have a ton of experiments that are going on, and then some real high-end stuff like the Anniversary Beer, Black Gold, Maple Barrel Stout. And then we have a ton of variants that we're playing with. So it's not just Bourbon Barrels, it's the Anniversary Beer in Rum Barrels, or in Brandy Barrels, and then some experimentations as well. It's a fun time in craft beer right now, to say the least. It's fun just to experiment with it, because honestly, even different bourbon barrel to bourbon barrel, some you'll get more vanilla, some you'll get some more oak. There's some that are deliciously woody, which is personally my favorite. I love that woody character. And some of them, you get just the char roastiness out of it compared to the vanilla. We're actually uh, getting ready to relaunch our, our full barrel-aged sour program. I own a farm three miles down the road and uh, we just revamped a building down there that will house all of our sour program. The thing I'm really excited about right now is the sour program and going into oak and kind of the long heritage that that brings and all the complexities that that brings as well because all those different microbes interact so differently throughout the entire process and the blends are something that you really have to like nail down. So we're excited to bring back beers like Exodus, um, which is sort of a Flanders style red with Door County cherries in it. And then a couple of other classics that we were doing. Uh, plums were on sale was one of my favorites too. That We named it that because the only reason we bought plums is because they were on sale. I am a little bit of a neat freak when it comes to this. So the fact that's three miles away is good. I wish it was further sometimes, but everything that I'm testing for right now is everything that we're gonna dump into that oak. So. This side is going to be very different from that. With beer, it's chemistry and biology, 100% basically. I mean, you have the yeast, the hops, it's all science based on that. So my lab started more of a bio micro lab and it's kind of expanded since then. Paul's been extremely generous. At the brewery here, we're all really excited to launch this farm project. I get dabbling again into some more of those sour beers. Right now, um, all of our flagship beers, all of our High-end beers are all distributed to a five-state radius. And then we do have some markets that are farther out. Those markets don't get most of our flagships. They do get the barrel-aged beers. So what we found is, you know, you can make a really great IPA, but the farther you get from your home market, the less relevant it is, okay? Why is that? Well, because there's 500 breweries 
that are closer to that market that are all making a great IPA. What makes Central Waters relevant the farther we get from home? Well, the barrel age product. We're one of the rare breweries that are doing barrel aging at such a grand scale um, that we can release it into much farther markets. The barrel aging program is one of the coolest things I've seen, really. It's so interesting how much you can geek out about it and how much there is still to study about all these things. And the flavors that you get, you can't imitate. I have never had a beer where it hasn't been an oak that doesn't get these characters, especially here after being in these oaks for a year. There's so many flavors that it's hard to pick out one. They play with each other so much, they complement each other. It's more like a, a wide palette that you sample instead of just some narrow, oh, this is hoppy, this is whatever. It's so complex that if you haven't tried a barrel-aged beer, you gotta. It's a whole new world that you can explore we have been dabbling with a little bit of export as well, just sort of for the fun of it. We've sent beer to the UK, Scotland, uh, Belgium. My head brewer, Simon, and I are actually heading over to Belgium for a beer festival at the end of the month. So, you know, great reason to ship some beer over there so you can go visit, right? <laughs> Years ago, it used to be that America was chasing Europe for beer styles and trying to do what beer has been done for ages over there. And now it seems that the rest of the world has turned around and started chasing the U.S. because craft beer is just incredible in the States right now. And the rest of the world is trying to catch up. So it's, it's a neat thing to see, you know. And while export might be hot right now, as more, as more craft beer develops in these other countries, export probably won't be nearly as hot as it is right now. So, you know, are we going to build a business plan on it? Absolutely not. You know, but are we going to have fun shipping it around? Absolutely. We actually have the largest renewable energy system of any brewery in the state right now. We have uh, 120 kilowatts of power being produced by the solar panels uh, out back. And then we also have a solar thermal system, which is actually producing heat for the building. When we first installed, it was producing about 70% of our electrical needs here. Um, as we've continued to grow, obviously that percentage goes down. So we're probably somewhere in the range of about 50% of our electrical needs are actually produced right on the back of the property but by those panels. On the weekends, obviously, when we're not having a lot of equipment running, that power is then sent back onto the grid and, and the power companies pay us for it. Anybody who has a business model that goes out farther than five or six years, it's a no-brainer. You know, our, our return on investment on those panels was anywhere from six to seven years, and the lifespan of those panels are 30 years. So once they're paid off, you're making money for another 24 years on them. When I moved to Amherst here, shortly after we moved the brewery here, I bought a house that was about two and a half miles down the road, and the guy I bought the house from, he was moving back onto the family farm, so he's up to about 450 acres, um, completely certified organic, and he actually grows for us about 200 acres now of barley. It's grown to such a, a great size for us that we've actually installed a new silo outside just to house the organic barley, which we then use in every single beer that we make. Is it 100% of the barley we use? No, we'll go through probably 2 million pounds of barley this year. What we do is we, we invest as much as we can into that local market without putting ourselves at too much risk. But it's great when you can go from uh, field to bottle all in a couple of mile radius. About three years ago, we had to make a big decision. Um, we were running a 30 barrel brew house and the decision was, are we gonna run around the clock or are we gonna make major investments and upgrade our brew house and uh, not have to run around the clock? A pretty big financial upgrade, but at the end of the day, I like sleeping. And when you live three miles down the road from the brewery, who's, when something goes wrong, I'm gonna be the one getting called. So we did a major brew house upgrade. We uh, upgraded to a Quality Tank Solutions 50 barrel brew house. Uh, it's fully automated, a, a state-of-the-art equipment with uh, overlapping shifts. We can crank out uh, two to three batches of beer in a day. With our fermentation or our cellar, we can actually crank out somewhere around 24,000 barrels a year. It's kind of a continual flow, basically, in and out of barrels and beer. This is actually just got expanded. In this area that we're standing was near the edge of it, and it just got doubled, so we can fit I would say probably close to 8,000 now plus in here. It's provided us room basically to do staging and stuff like that while still having enough room to store all of our barrels, moving them minimally basically, making sure that they're, they're sitting happy. I graduated from college uh, back in 1998 and uh, shortly after graduation, the original owners of the brewery had heard that I was looking for a job and actually called me to see if I wanted a part-time position working in the brewery. Of course, 
I hopped right on it. Started as a part-time position, quickly led to a full-time position within two to three months. Uh, by the end of six months, I was basically handling all the brewing operations. In 20 years, it's grown to uh, what I like to call a hobby that's way out of control. You know, we were in a 2,500 square foot building in Junction, uh, landlocked, couldn't expand there. The coffee shop here in Amherst always carried our beer. So when we come down to Amherst to deliver the beer, this is back in the self-distribution days, you'd load up the dolly and you'd have to walk it half a block down to the coffee shop and everybody who drove past you was waving. And it was just like, that's where we want to be. Um, it's been a, a fantastic relationship. It's amazing how we've been able to pull so many tourists and travelers into a town of a thousand people. In 2017, we had over 50,000 visitors to the tap room, bringing almost a thousand people in a week. We are in rural America right here, that's for sure. You know, you have to drive 45 minutes to hit a population of over 100,000. I like to say I have an allergy to stoplights. But our tap room, uh, you know, has really been inspired by our surroundings. The steel that, that accents our bar and our walls, um, that came off of a steel building that was being taken down over in uh, a different part of Amherst. Uh, all of this barn board came from barns in the local area that were torn down. So we've taken a lot of products that have been in the area for a long time and we're repurposing them to make a, a pretty unique looking tap room. Um, and the best part is, is you know, you're, you're right inside the brewery. That confines our open times to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when we're not in production. But that also makes it more of a sought after thing as well. You know, you can't just swing by here on Tuesday and sit down in the tap room and watch us work. Um, but it just amazes me that what we've been able to do to attract people and, and show them a good time at Central Waters over the last few years. When we first moved here, we built a, a tiny little bar that was eight by eight by eight, and it had about 16 stools. And our thought was in Junction City, we never had a tap room. So, you know, moving here, it was, we need something. So when the, guys, when the guys are coming in for a growler fill, we can fill their growler and they can buy a pint. We never thought that this would be part, like a major part of our business plan. So as it's developed you know from 10 customers a night to 50,000 customers a year it's, it's amazing the beer tourism is gigantic right now you know i always love every once in a while i'll hop in and i'll do a friday or saturday tour and the first thing i do is people walk up is where are you from you know oh we're from the twin cities you know or we're from chicago what brings you here this and it's like you you drove from chicago to come visit us like that's incredible to me If you had asked me if we were going to be where we are today 10 years ago, I would have laughed at you. You know, I, I just never thought this stuff was possible. Especially my crew in here, we keep our heads down, we're humble, and, and we work hard, you know, and we're proud of what we do, but we're out in a little tiny Amherst, so we don't get to see the, the marketplace all the time and the hype behind it. It's a fun little, almost family type run operation. Like I said, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have believed it. You know, it, it, it still blows my mind. It's a pretty cool thing. It, like I said, it depends on the day for me what beer I like. We don't make a bad beer in my opinion. There's beers that I like more than others, but there's no bad beer. Working here has opened my eyes to it. It's like I took my magic carpet ride and now I have a whole new world basically that I can explore and enjoy. All we want to do is keep creating really fun beers, you know, and that's, that's why we got the farm project launching. That's why we got the pilot system. Our head brewer is ripping off one to two batches a week on that pilot system, you know, and the fun part is, is you can only get it here on tap. I mean, so it's, it's not stuff that's going into distribution. We're taking these pilot beers, we're putting it into our tap room, we're getting immediate response from our fans that are coming to visit us. You know right away what people are thinking of these new beers and, okay, should we tweak this, tweak that, you know, and it helps us bring other products to market in the future. So um, for us, you know, is there big growth plans? No, there's not, you know. Is there any crazy things or ideas that we're gonna be doing? No, it's just, brewing more beer that we love to brew and drink. So and hopefully everybody else likes it too. So. <laughs>
and bigger topping pizza. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.